In 2021, Shazia Sikandar initiated a series called Kilvat, or Privacy, that engages with an album here at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. Each of this, the inscriptions in this album, dated 1678, probably made somewhere in the Deccan by Beaconary artists, starts with the word Hilvat. And we are engaging with the idea of privacy in this new series, only two of which paintings are being shown as, as, as part of Shazia Sikandar Unbound at Jesus College. I think there's a sense of space that's created in each of the paintings in this album that creates the privacy in different ways. I think we need to sort of dig into what Hilvat means, whether we can define it as the English word privacy or it means something more potent than that, and how it can be productive for understanding works of art like this. Yes, yeah, so of course I think um when I'm looking at this work, the first thing is uh, that, that, that I want to sort of engage with is its form. If you look at the two characters, the two figures, the way they are, uh, the, the intimacy between them is so stylized, it's so beautiful. Do you recognize, like I'm seeing like the image, the image of infinity? Absolutely, they're, right? they're, they're two S's that are intersecting. Yeah. Through the through the way that they the way they are embracing so through the form of the um, the arms mm -hmm. and then also it's it mimics yeah. in the way the two cushions are what's so fascinating about many of these paintings is just the inscriptions they're all so they're almost like jokes because it's completely improbable that any of the artists and many of the rulers um, were even alive in the late 17th century when these paintings were made. So this is one that is named, ascribed to Amalek Govardhan. And Govardhan was an amazing Mughal painter, but he was likely not alive when this work was made. It feels a little awkward in terms of its composition to me. Of course, the, you know, the, the the nature of distancing, the way the two characters are on the roof. They're smaller, but there's this, um, it's almost uh, as if it's a kind of a layered or collaged idea of space. And um, again, I think the focus is on the act itself. Yeah. And then the rest is built around, built it, around it. Built around yeah. it. So what I find really most fascinating about this entire album is that the, 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 the two protagonists, the actual act of intimacy that's being performed for the viewer is almost incredibly animated. Like there's this empowering relationship in terms of movement and in how these two characters continuously interact as you see them. And in, Even if they've been yeah. painted at different times, but there is this kind of continuation and that, that, that speaks volumes to me. And in your series, what's so amazing is that you're able to control the gouache so that you can't really tell where one figure ends and the other one begins. So many of your recent works have been dealing with fire. And one of the initial things that my eyes landed on was this candelabra at the bottom of the page and thinking about illumination and thinking about what were the viewing contexts for these paintings? What, were, what was the light like in, in, in those situations? And then how you're responding to issues of emanating light. Um, yes, so even that, that suggestion of light at the bottom is almost like a signature. But if you look at the canopy, it's almost, um, it isn't, doesn't that give you the sense that it's the whole, that section captures the mood, the light. It's a very delicate, could be the morning light, could be the evening light. Uh, like for me, that's really powerful that it's 
say so much in such simple ways. So this kind of everything has receded from the first painting that we saw. Mm -hmm. And now it's almost it doesn't even need all of that armature, the conversations. It's just the two characters that are so more complex. Even even as like forms, they are just much more architectural almost. When I see them, I'm thinking that there is a the, the idea of privacy is really a, a very personal space as well as a um, communal space. Yeah, and, and when I look at paintings like this, and there's so many of these wonderful objects in, in British archives, um, I think about the centuries of time where these were not accessible or visible, and fortunately now, anybody from the public can look at them at the Fitzwilliam and but we have to be in Cambridge. So. There's such a capacious and fluid vision of gender when we're looking at these paintings. Absolutely. Does it even matter with gender? Like I when I'm reading this one in particular, I do not see gender. I'm not even thinking of binary. I am thinking that these two characters are kind of performing the notion of gender in this most evocative, powerful way where it breaks the binaries. And, and this whole idea of the erotic, right? The erotic is such an androgynous notion within, within this um, vernacular. And even as forms, right? It's a very mass. Both are both can be feminine and masculine at the same time. At the same time. At the same yeah. time, it's it's that acknowledgement that you have the ability to encompass all genders. Thank you, Shazia. Of course, thank you. I'm Jessica Berenbaum. I'm the curator of the West Court Gallery at Jesus College in Cambridge. I, I'm so delighted to be showing the work of such a wonderful artist who engages really deeply and profoundly with the archive in her practice more broadly, and also specifically in this case is looking closely to and responding to works of art in Cambridge collections and taking that response as the catalyst for a wonderful new body of work. Uh, so thank you so much, Shazia, uh, for showing with us. We're really so happy to have you at the gallery.